Harold Sobley with the Mayo Clinic, and I uh, wanted to talk about a pilot study we did, although it's, it's kind of oddly mislabeled given that the end of the, the tests we ended up doing inside it. And uh, we ended up with uh, several things that uh, all overlap with and, and potentially augment some of the work we've seen going on today. Our three deliverables consisted of a, a um, an examination of uh, met data schema harmonization in particular. We looked at trying to align uh, the dbGaP metadata model with the emerging BioCaddy um, DATS, I think it is, I think the, the, the model for the BioCaddy. Um, looked at how we could use some of that alignment for actually um, converting variables uh, and, and, and doing uh, study level transformation. And then one that started, I've been hearing more about, uh, is exposing variables of various sorts via schema.org. Okay, so um, in, in the first deliverable, um, we used an OWL model of uh, ISO 11179. And we, we created converters that took the uh, dbGaP XML schema and converted it into an OWL representation. And the BioCaddy JSON schemas, uh, the version 1.0 was the one we worked at, worked with, but also into a particular OWL representation. And then used um, the, the OWL representation to propose alignments and, and discover potential issues and uh, the ramifications of uh, stating that uh, variables are about the same thing. Um, the, the XML schema to L converter is not a complete schema to L converter. It covers the dbGaP problem. It could be generalized, but we made no attempt to do everything you can say in XML schema and L. Um, and one of the questions that comes to mind is this has this has been done before. Why why another uh, one or a schema to one uh, L converter? And um, the key is is that we want to align this with the ISO 11179 metadata repository model. We want to particularly um, take uh, where, where we have data type properties, we want to um, also declare them to be data elements. Uh, and, and the restrictions on the various values, we want to also declare them as value domains. Uh, I'll touch a bit, just a bit more on that in a second. Um, on the, and the similar converter for the BioCaddy to L, uh, uh, they have a JSON schema source, and uh, I have to say it, it was a little frustrating just because there's not that many tools around JSON schema. There are aspects of the spec that we certainly didn't understand, um, and so, so we, we scoped it very specifically to the part of JSON schema that was used by uh, BioCaddy. There's all sorts of delightful things you can do with JSON schema and some very mysterious things you can do as well, but uh, certainly um, we, we were able to absorb uh, what, what was published in BioCaddy. Now, what we're doing and the reason we're going into OWL is, is OWL by itself is, is not a very good schema language. I think a lot of people have discovered that being open world, it tends to not give you the results you expect. The, the job of OWL is to say, is there any legitimate configuration of all the variables here where, where everything you've told us makes sense? And uh, it, it will come to very strange conclusions. But the key is here is that um, we're, we're pulling in um, data about data. Our universe of discourse is not the biomedical world. It, it's not genes and people and samples. It's uh, records about genes and people and samples. And uh, it gives us an interesting new upper level ontology because our universe of discourse is data. Uh, like the ISO 11179 model actually serves reasonably well as a top level ontology that we map things into. Uh, when we started doing it, we started using a, uh, an Allen model that was published by the XDR group uh, back in 2002 or three. And in the process of working with it, discovered that there's an organization called NSA, uh, if you've heard from them. And for 
interesting reasons. Uh, they've decided that some of the stuff that was hidden behind their, uh, their firewall is no longer so secret. And uh, so in particular, they're making a, a, a finished model, L model, uh, public um, here. So uh, let's see. So a quick upper level view of this, uh, just I grabbed a, a, a variable, a DBGAP a data set create date. And um, kind of underneath the old paint cover up there is, is the fact that it's about a, a, an object called a data set creation date, or a, a data element, I'm sorry, called data set creation date. The object's the data set and, and the property's a creation date. Uh, we started looking at the ontology of clinical research. I remember what E stands for, but it looks like that will serve very well as the the meaning part that we can put up in that upper left hand corner. The upper right hand corner, um, BFO2, um, Basic Foundational Ontology 2, has started talking about um, statements and documents and assertions versus reality itself start to produce a, a reasonable model about um, data uh, and also listening to the discussions today, one of the things we should be feeding up into that upper right hand corner is some of the mapping to terminology that's doing it going on actually in the BioCaddy thing because part of the key for good alignment is to make sure that you understand what the data elements are, are describing. and. Um, by getting the descriptions in, we can determine where the data, data elements align up. So let me see here, I'll just back up. So, so our goal in the end is to come up with a, a set of uh, equivalent statements or similar statements that we can actually produce a JSON-LD description of the dbGaP BioCaddy alignment. Um, the next step was can we use this JSON-LD description to actually convert uh, study descriptions from dbGaP. So we, we took, uh, as we, we have a tool that goes out to the DBGAP, fetches the study descriptions, converts it um, into a standard JSON using an OMG spec, and then uses the JSON that we produced in the first experiment, uh, uh, to uh, the JSON LD that we produced in the first experiment to try to convert it into BioCaddy RDF. And I'm sure some of you in this room know more about this than we did at the time. We, we, we learned about both what you can and can't do with JSON LD. And while we could do a lot of the conversions uh, from dbGaP um, into BioCaddy using uh, JSON LD, uh, there were structural places you can't do major structural transformations in JSON LD. Uh, the other problem that you have is uh, they, there's an assumption that the tags are uh, pretty much universal. So when you've got tags inside tags that mean different things in different contexts, it becomes uh, very problematic. So to accomplish this transformation, in the short term we just wrote some Python code. And, uh, in the longer term we believe that uh, it's something called uh, a shape expressions map, which is another thing we're working in, with, will help really in those sorts of uh, RDF micro transformations that are needed to get it converted. So. Uh, right, a JSON LD map, and uh, we've shown that checks and JSON LD could do it. Uh, one of our next steps is, is to actually start emitting those transformations. Our, our third deliverable, uh, exposing metadata through schema.org, we worked with BioCaddy and um, actually used, showed that the owl that we produced out of the BioCaddy schemas could sensibly be converted into schema.org. That definitely overlaps with what I've heard today, and we need to talk about how those do and don't go together. But the other thing we did is we converted, this is the first mention of FIRE actually, but uh, it's, it's the, um, let's see, Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, and it's a standard and uh, metadata model and model that's uh, kind of over the past couple of years pretty much taken over the healthcare standards community. And much of clinical data will soon be available in this fire model. So we just took a look at uh, whether exposing the fire model through schema.org made sense. And uh, 
We talk some with the Healthcare Life Sciences um, schema.org group and, uh, and also created a map. We have a, a trial, I notice it says local host, there's, I need to fix that. There's actually a public document out there where you can look at the fire schema out there in schema.org. Uh, just a sample here of observation with the body site and uh, um, uh, some sample observation codes and what have you. Uh, and that's out there. Uh, we've had the fire community looking at it, um, and there's been a lot of varied responses, uh, some very interested and some interesting concerns. Um, our next step really, and I think it's probably the next step that uh, you would want to do here with uh, the, the BioCaddy and schema.org, is, is to come up with some use cases to make sure that it makes sense. Uh, the, the two that we've got is one, the fire specification states that when you exchange data, you need a human readable form of whatever data you exchange, and that form is typically HTML. We, we're looking at it as both a way of, of, of marking up the HTML with the, the, the provenance uh, for big data records, but also possibly um, just having the HTML as the primary vehicle with uh, a JSON LD container. Um, the other one that uh, we're, we're looking at is some of the, the health apps, the mobile apps that emit clinical data of various sorts, and whether it wouldn't make sense to mark up some of the, the XML or HTML that comes out of there. And then I'm saying reconcile with the health and medical types, and also uh, with uh, what's uh, the other one is that stuff coming out of BioCaddy. Um, um, and just as an aside, one thing that uh, is, is interesting that came out of this. So we've been working with the fire community to produce an RDF representation, and as of the latest ballot, um, it, there are now three standard exchange formats for clinical data using fire, and that's XML, JSON, and RDF. And uh, the uh, shape expressions language is being used for description and, and validation and starting.